Welcome to PPI Training Shorts. The Plastics Pipe Institute's mission is to advance the acceptance and use of plastic pipe systems through research, education, technical expertise, and advocacy. This training short is part of a series of training shorts for YouTube on HDPE Conduit and covers the basics of PE materials and how they are specified in North American standards. For links to other PPI training shorts, see the video description below or wait until the end of the video for links to other videos in the series on HDPE Conduit. Let's focus on the HDP material that is used for Conduit applications. First, we will do an introduction to HDP materials, in general, followed by HDP materials as used in Conduit. High-density polyethylene is a thermoplastic polymer with a very broad range of applications. It can be used for pipe for many different types of applications from water and sewer, to gas, to oil and gas production, to industrial drainage and of course conduit. It can be produced in sheet form, it can be molded into bottles, fuel tanks, and even used as cable insulation, and that's just a few examples of the wide range of applications. But what is polyethylene? Well polyethylene, or P for short, is a thermoplastic material produced from the polymerization of ethylene. Ethylene is a derivative of ethane, which is a constituent within natural gas, or can be derived from oil, and is starting to be produced from biosources and chemical recycling of plastics. The illustration shown here is how you go from ethane into ethylene. This reaction takes place in devices known as reactors. Ethane itself is a very clean molecule and is very energy efficient in production. When we react many ethylene molecules together, we get long chains. We call the shorter chains, wax, but as the chains get longer, we call them polyethylene. It is a very tough material, has a low coefficient of friction so it is very slippery, has high abrasion resistance, and is resistant to most chemical attack. These properties provide lots of useful benefits in construction environments. It's also an environmentally friendly product with a low carbon footprint compared to non-plastic materials. Now what is high-density polyethylene? HDP is a grade of polyethylene. It's a specific type with specific physical properties and it's made of a combination of crystalline structures, which consist of folded chains which provide stiffness and tensile strength, and an amorphous phase, or regions, which consists of tie molecules that provide the flexibility, toughness, impact resistance, and abrasion resistance. It's a combination of these different types of polyethylene molecules that give the material its overall properties. To make HDP with specific properties, the manufacturers of, the of these products can control the branching of the molecules and thus the structure and properties of the final product. By introducing a lot of branching, these branches interfere with the ability of molecules to fit close together, resulting in lower crystallinity and lower density. For higher crystallinity and overall material density, branching is tightly controlled which allows more crystals to form. So with specific grades of HDP that we use for piping applications, they are designed to provide a unique polymeric structure resulting in what is called a viscoelastic material, i.e., the material in the solid form displays both viscous behavior and elastic behavior. The level of stress and the time under stress are important in defining which behavior and the balance of behaviors we see in the application. Viscous behavior means that, that it will deform under stress and not recover. Think of a very thick liquid, like honey or butter. The rate of deformation depends on the level of applied stress and the characteristics of the material. Whereas, the elastic behavior provides immediate recoverable deformation when the stress is removed, like a spring. The illustration on the right shows a spring and a damper, as if this was a car suspension. It gives a kind of mechanistic illustration of how polyethylene can react to forces and stresses, and movement. HDP materials are actually designed to display the ideal combinations of behaviors depending on the application. Different applications for pipe have different needs. Every material has its limits, including HDP. So these limits are understood and reflected in the product and application standards to ensure integrity of the pipe during installation and long-term performance in service. So for the industry standards and specifications, these properties are actually specified according to a system known as the cell classification. The cell classification system is published in the ASTM standard D3350. This table is an excerpt from the ASTM D3350 standard. The cell classification defines whether a P material is considered low density, medium density, or high density. Today we will only talk about high density products as used in HDP conduit. If you looked at the HDP conduit standards or you have seen a conduit manufacturer's specification, 
You may have seen the minimum cell class for HTTP conduit is specified as P334480C or P334480E, and you may wonder what those numbers mean. Those numbers are part of the cell classification as defined in ASTM D3350, as shown below. The first digit refers to density, the second to melt index, the third to flexural modulus, the fourth to tensile strength at yield, the fifth to slow crack growth resistance, and the sixth and final digit refers to the hydrostatic strength classification. Conduit uses a zero for the sixth digit, as this is exclusively for the use of pressure pipe materials. Finally, the letters C or E are added at the end and refer to how UV resistance is achieved. C refers to the use of carbon black in a black product or E refers to products which are colored with UV stabilizers built into the compound. There are also other properties, which are not part of the cell classification, but which are still interesting to know for conduit applications. For instance, when it comes to the typical elongation at break, the requirement is for over 400%. If you tried to stretch HDP conduit, it would elongate at least 400% before it would break. Its brittleness temperature, otherwise known as glass transition temperature, where it actually becomes brittle, is below minus 139 degrees Fahrenheit. Its melting temperature is around 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Its auto-ignition temperature is over 650 degrees Fahrenheit. It has a dielectric strength value which is applicable to some conduit applications of 500 to 600 volts per mil and its coefficient of friction is approximately 0.29. Now a lot of these properties are specified in product standards as we said before, and the primary product standard for HDP conduit materials is ASTM F2160 standard specification for solid wall HDP conduit. Below are a few screenshots from ASTM F2160, the material section which defines exactly where those cell classification values are published and applied. So you can see in section 4.1, it is defined exactly what the minimum cell class shall be. The slow crack growth resistance is also defined in section 4.2. And for aerial applications of conduit, in section 4.4, it's also defined how those products are UV stabilized against sun damage using carbon black. Because those would be non-buried applications but exposed outdoor applications on poles. Other performance requirements are also specified within ASTM F2160. For example, the elongation at break isn't just nice to have. It is a requirement as specified in section 5.3.1 that the minimum elongation at break shall be 400%. That's the minimum. Impact characteristics are defined in section 5.3.2. Section 5.5 defines the pipe stiffness compression and recovery requirements. These and other requirements are already specified in this product standard and you can see from this example that the standard imposes specific and rigorous requirements. Other product standards, published by other organizations, define similarly rigorous requirements. PPI and other manufacturers work hard to make sure that all these industry standards have appropriate and similar requirements. However, they are not identical nor completely harmonized with each other. Another one of these standards is NEMA TC7 which also defines material requirements. You can see here how they are defined once again in accordance with the ASTM D3350 cell class. Pipe stiffness is also defined within NEMA TC7, as you can see in section 5.3. In a future training session, we will delve more into the specifics of the various standards, but I think you get the idea that the industry standards are rigorous and ensure the product performs in the applications. If you are interested in more content on HDPE Conduit, we have a full introductory course on our online learning management, PPI eLearn, which we offer free as a service to the industry. See the description below for a link. Also click these tiles if you are interested in other training shorts in the series. Subscribe if you want to be alerted to new content.